What's like your advice to a guy who's whatever? He could be coming out of university or in his 30s, but he's like looking for a little direction. How do you how do you start off, get centered to become successful, you know, get money, get big? Like how what would you tell them? That's a I can answer that question in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. There's like 10 different answers I can give. But I think truthfully in the world we're living in now, I use this analogy a lot. Maybe I overuse it. But you need to find a way to some degree to escape the matrix. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I say the matrix because the matrix, the way it is designed. And you're now, not just talking shit because you've actually done that. I've escaped the matrix. Yeah. I've literally escaped the matrix in nearly every form. So any form of oppression no longer applies to me. I can't be canceled. No, I can say what I want. My finances are secure. I've escaped the matrix. And when I talk about the matrix, it primarily applies to men because men are the backbone of the slave force. We always have been and always will be. And unfortunately now, if you're a law abiding man inside the matrix, your future and the life that is laid out for you is nothing but depressing. You're going to go to school. You're going to get in debt. You're going to get a job. You're going to get a wife. Divorce is coming. You're going to lose the house eventually. Your job's shit. Inflation's outpacing your wages. You're going to work, work, work. No one's going to appreciate it. Now you're old and your life's over. That is the matrix for 99% of men. And you need to find a way to escape it. And I guess I was kind of fortunate from a young age. I always knew that the matrix was coming and that the system is designed to oppress. The people who make the rules do not make the rules for the benefit of us. They make the rules for the benefit of the people who make the rules. And I knew that. And I think every person intrinsically knows that. Like if it's four in the morning and you're sitting in a gas station and a Lambo pulls up, you're probably thinking drug dealer or criminal. You're not thinking, oh, he definitely went to school. The system is absolutely broken. It's designed to oppress and that the majority of people who stick to the rules are gonna lose. I, I don't wanna sit here on a podcast that goes out to this many people and encourage anyone to break the law in any form. Of course. But the idea of the law abiding citizen has been decimated in real time. In the last two, two, three years ago, you could stand there and proudly say, I'm a law abiding citizen. The last two years, if they have not taught you that being a law abiding <laughs> citizen is gonna ta turn you nothing into a fucking experiment for big pharma, then you're an idiot. You can no longer obey the law. You, you, and I'm not saying you have to break the law, but you need yeah. to find a way to do what the elites do, which is bend the law. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can no longer sit there and go, I'm just going to follow the rules and it's going to be okay. No, it isn't. I and if you're a man, so. and if you're a man, it's your job to find a way to not be sticking to those rules enough to escape the matrix and become free. Because what's actually most crazy about this period of history is that it's actually the easiest time in human history to become rich. And the reason for that is because there's so many people inside the matrix being destroyed. Money has to go somewhere. I've made so much money during COVID, it's absolutely incredible, right? Yeah. And, and and a whole bunch of people got lucky. I've, I've always been disciplined with myself because I've always lived a disciplined life. I lived in a disciplined household. Like there was no such thing as I don't want to. So even now, if I wake up and I don't want to do something, I don't need someone to tell me to do it because I'll do it anyway. I mean, who wants to run a marathon? Nobody. Who wants to do that? You just do it, don't you? Because, you know, it's the it's thing you're going to have to do and you have to blood, sweat, tears, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I, I was growing up in, in, in a very disciplined household and I think it's absolutely the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, and yeah, that's it. I had a very, very good childhood. I, I, when I look at some of the stuff on Twitter about parenting and stuff like in my household, oh, I fucked up, I got hit, for example. Uh -huh. And I think that's a fantastic, I can't wait to kick my kid's ass when he gets hurt. I can't wait <laughs> because th that's the real world. The real world's gonna hit you hard if you make mistakes and you need to learn that there's, there's boundaries you shouldn't cross and you need to learn to, you know, Cause and effect. I, I, I love my upbringing from start to finish. Yeah, and it seems like it served you well. I get called a sociopath all the time and a psychopath all the time. I get called that, but I don't think people understand that there is a version of the world where you can feel things and really not give a fuck how you feel. Like, mm -hmm. I, I can, I, if I feel sad, it does not change how I act and it does not change the things I do. If I don't feel like going to the gym, I go to the gym. If I don't feel like working, I will still work. I lived, I lived in a world for 15 years where I didn't feel like fighting because my nose was broken, but I had to fight anyway. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these people come up to me and, and they say, oh, but I feel this way. I don't put a, a huge amount of importance on emotions. It's not that I don't feel them. It's that I don't think they have much to do with anything at all. If I wake up in a happy mood and I have a business to run and females to cater for and things to do, if I wake up in a sad mood, I have the same shit to do. I'm going to get it done. So where's the importance of it? People always say, oh, I wish I had something to work on. You could work hard on anything. It can be the most jackass thing. You can work hard on, I don't know, fucking whittling, buildings. Wh yeah, <laughs> whittling twigs. But if you truly work your ass off, it's difficult for it to have a negative impact on your life. It's hard to say I'm working my ass off at X and it's made my life worse.
Mm. You know, you're not you're not doing anything, and and you're asking the question, hoping I'm going to give you some magical answer that's going to allow you to be motivated forever. But motivation isn't real. Everyone says this. Motivation is not real. Discipline's real. I do not feel like training, but I still train because I'm a disciplined individual. You don't get to go through life only doing the things. You this once again ties into your network, the people around you, everyone else around you. When you say you feel a certain way, if they don't check you, then why are you hanging around with them? Thanks. If you're going to sit there and go, I feel sad, and your friends are going to go, oh, bro, you feel sad, man? Sorry to hear that, bro. It's hard to be sad, bro. You sad, bro? Oh, we're sad too, bro. I was sad last week. Uh -huh. What the f is wrong with you? I can't even. Tristan, I feel sad. I'm like, shut up. My, my boys around me, there is no weakness in my circle. Yeah. You need to create your reality. You got to keep this in mind. I'm tired of hearing guys mess about how they feel. I don't feel motivated. I don't feel. Feel, 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 feel. Leave the feelings to the girls. Right? That's what they do. We act. We're men of action. We get things done. So the world got built. All of it. All the men who built the skyscrapers felt scared. They did it anyway. You need to become a man of action. Stop worrying about how you feel and start worrying about what you're supposed to be doing.